Hey guys, so um, a couple of days ago, a colleague and friend of mine was discussing um, making some speaker cabinets. And uh, yesterday uh, he told me he was preparing to um, build three enclosures that will, uh, each enclosure will contain one of these eight inch speakers. Uh, and this is the uh, actual data sheet from the manufacturer of the speaker. <clears throat> and um, I asked him, um, would he like for me to uh, make a template, a reusable template that would make it easier for him to um, make all of these uh, cabinets so that um, the speaker cutouts and all the holes and all are in the uh, correct location and so that um, all of them are uniform. And uh, he, uh, he liked that idea. So uh, anyway, I, I thought it would be a good idea uh, to um, use that to make a brief video to demonstrate how to uh, draw this template in vCarve and generate tool paths. So um, anyway, this is the data sheet for the, the speaker. It's an eight inch speaker. This is the ring for the speaker, the mounting ring, and this is the frame. And we have some dimensions. We have 187 millimeters here to the inside where the speaker will drop in. And then we see these all these screw holes. Uh, they appear to be equidistanced. I did bring those in to another software package where I could kind of touch off and get close. They they do appear to be equidistanced, uh, meaning they are from an equal equal distance from one another. Um, we have the center mark. And we have uh, here, we have a ring uh, that uh, represents a 207 millimeter diameter circle that we can use to uh, align the centers of the screws. So we're going to use this information from this data sheet and we're going to make a 12 inch by 12 inch template. So we're going to open vCarve Pro. We're going to create a new file. When you create the new file, your job setup comes up automatically first. If you ever accidentally mess up and you need to change that dimension, if you go back up to edit job size and position, you can pull that back up. And um, the 304.8 millimeters, that's what 12 inches converts to. So we're doing a 304.8 by 304.8 and his material is going to be 19 millimeters thick. We're going to zero off of the material surface, so the top of the workpiece. And I like to reference the center of the workpiece in, in my carves. So we're good there. Now the first thing that I want to do is um, I want to create a layer um, for the center. Uh, we When we first start we have one layer and um, I'm going to rename this layer layout and um, I'll leave it black and then I'm going to add a layer and uh, I'm going to call this layer center and if we go here to the stripe down we can change the color to red. Uh, these two lamps turn the layer on or off so it would be visible or invisible. Whichever layer is in bold will also be displayed here. This is the active layer. If you're ever not certain and you click on the drop down and bring these up, if you right click on whatever layer you want to activate and hit activate, it will be the active uh, layer. So right now we're going to draw two center marks. We're going to look at our create vectors area and we're going to grab the tool for drawing a line. We have a pop-up that comes up and I'm going to show you how to use this uh, in a few moments. We're not going to use this pop-up in this case though because we're just going to go to the zero positions and uh, we're going to snap from there to there. Right click to stop drawing. I'm going to left click here, left click here, right click to stop drawing. <clears throat> so now we have two center marks. So. <clears throat> If you look back at a drawing, we we need eight screws, and it, these eight screws are equal distances apart. So now we need some reference marks for that, and there are a couple of ways that you can do that that are pretty fast. 
Um, one way since we have a perfect square is we can select layout and we can go back to the line tool and we can draw from corner to corner and we can use that method but I want to show you a different method. In BCarve and most modeling software that I've used if, and CAM software, if you uh, left click and you're selecting, if you drag from left to right, your software won't select anything unless the entire object is in this little window. See how it selected that horizontal line and that vertical line? If you drag, if you left click and drag from right to left, anything it touches is selected. Okay, so we're going to use this technique. We're going to drag from left to right and select those center marks that we just created. And we're going to go over here to this transform objects area. And uh, this moves an object, this resizes an object, and this rotates. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we have these two um, layers. And <clears throat> we do have these um, reference lines that are also our centers. So we're going we're gonna to drag from left to right, I mean from right to left to select them all. And then we're going to right click and say move to layer or I mean copy to layer layout. Okay. Now we're going to go back up here to our layers and we're going to turn off the center layer. And now we just see the, the two black lines. We'll left click and drag from right to left again to select those. And we'll go over here to our transform objects tools. And over here we have move, resize, and rotate. We're going to rotate. Okay, sorry, I uh, had a phone call. We're having some work done, so I have to stop and answer my phone if it rings. Um, okay, so now um, that, um, that we've selected the um, layout lines, we're going to rotate these 45 degrees is what we're going to do. And now, once we do this and close that window, you'll notice that we have an X. And when we turn on the center layer again, we now have um, eight equal um, segments. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's draw our circles. We're going to go up here and click on the Draw Circle tool. And we want the, these circles to be based on the center, which is zero, zero. And we're going to go back and uh, we're going to look. We got 187 millimeters, uh, but we we need to have at least enough play there that um, the end user of the template can, um, once he cuts this hole out with his router, that it's not going to be a problem for his speaker to sit easily into the hole. OK, so we're going to we're going to just go up a millimeter. That'll be a half millimeter per side. Hopefully that'll be enough. Um, so that being said, with uh, with this big center being, um, I mean, this uh, uh, cross section being 187 millimeters, we're going to go 188 millimeters and hit enter or click on create. You can click on create here or just hit enter. And then we're going to go back and look at our drawing again. And this, we have a reference circle with a cross section of 207, which means it's 207 millimeters in diameter. That is a layout circle to help us to place the center of each screw hole in, um, in its correct position uh, in relation to the center of the speaker. So now we go back, and again, that distance is 207. So now while we have this tool open, we just change this to 207 and we can hit enter. And now we have two circles and we can hit close. So now this circle is in the currently in the layout layer, but it's not part of the layout. So we're going to move this to a new layer and we're going to call that layer. We'll call it speaker hole. And let's make it uh, dark blue. So now that's in its own layer where we can turn it on and off. 
and then um, our layout layer is ready for us to start placing our screw holes. Now, um, my colleague uh, said he's going to most likely be using a 1 inch drill bit to drill his pilot holes and he's not certain of which screws he's going to use and he may go to a different screw later and use like a, a nut and a bolt. So all we care about is pilot holes. So that 1 16th, we we'll open our calculator and 1 divided by 16, which are uh, 0.0625. So that is 1 16th inch drill bit and decimal and we convert that by multiplying it by 25.4 which is the coefficient to convert from uh, imperial to millimeters metric and that's because there are 25.4 millimeters in every inch and we hit equal and we have 1.5875 now we're going to round this up just a bit so that he has enough room that his bit isn't actually drilling into the template when he uses it um, so we're going to go up to 1.6. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the circle tool. And um, we're going to go to 1.6. And hold on a second. Let me get this call. Okay, I had to stop for a moment and uh, take a call. And then I had to leave. I'm going to try to remember where I was. Um, so we're going to draw these circles. 1.6 millimeter diameter. And uh, we're going to click at every one of those intersections. And okay, so now after that, we hit close. So now we have all of our, all of our screw holes and we have um, our center marks and we have the inner inside circle. Now, when we carve this and these areas here and from here to here and here to here and here to here, we, we want to be able to align this with center marks on the outside or inside once this is removed. So that means that um, when we go to uh, engrave this line, we need to make sure we go past the edge of our circle cut. So we're going to use this other little tool, the offset tool. We're going to click on this circle. Well, first, let's make sure we have the layout layer. It's active. And then we select on the circle for the, for the, for the uh, speaker hole cut. And then here in offset and layout, we have this offset tool. Select it. We're going to go inward and we're going to go a distance of three millimeters and then close. Okay, so now that we've done this, we want to take these center marks and let's highlight both of these. And now we're going to copy them to a new layer or move, uh, no, copy to a new layer. And we're going to call this um, alignment marks. Okay. And uh, let's make this uh, magenta. Okay. All right, so now that we have those marks, we'll go back to our um, layers and turn off the center and um, turn off the speaker hole. Well, actually, you can leave that on, but we want to make this one active. We want to use the alignment marks layer. And then we're going to go over here and use the trim tool which is in edit objects and it looks like a pair of scissors and we're going to go over and trim this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece and then close that. So now we still have our center, but now we'll have these marks that we can, um, we can use, uh, for, uh, vectors to, um, to, um, engrave a, a, an alignment line or set of alignment lines. So now we no, no longer need this offset circle. So we can just highlight it and delete it. We really don't need any of the alignment stuff, but <clears throat> except for um, the 
we have the speaker hole I mean the uh, we still have the screw holes on it so um, now what we're going to do is um, we're going to move them to their own layer and uh, to do that we're going to click up here somewhere where we don't grab everything and go down here and uh, go across here and then that'll select oh didn't miss that one uh, here that'll select all of these and not the lines across hold down shift and then go back and lift uh, drag across those two and now that those are all selected we're going to right click and say move to layer new layer and we're going to call those screw holes and let's make those light blue and hit OK. All right, so now, so now we look at our drawing again and we notice that our screw holes, they are not aligned with these two center marks. They are rotated and they're rotated half of the distance between um, where our marks currently are located and they are uh, 45 degrees apart. So half of 45 degrees is 22.5. So we'll go here and uh, we will take everything, turn everything off except for the screws. Okay, and then we'll select all of the screws. And then over on the transform objects, we go to the rotate selected objects and we're gonna rotate 22.5 degrees. And then now we see that we have our holes where they should be. And we can turn everything back on. And we can see that it does match the other drawing. So since we have these now, our actual vectors, we can turn out off the layoff out. Turn we can turn off the layout um, layer and we can go to the center layer and turn that off. And now we are ready to begin doing our tool paths, which will be the next segment. So we go file, save as, and we can call this um, eight inch speaker template. And we can save it wherever you want to put it. And then in the next part, we will do the tool paths.